So we all know Dragapult is a good card, but I tell you what, I've actually been not very impressed with it until I got my hands on this list, baby. Let's have a look. Hey guys, just before we get into the video, if you're part of the 60% of people that watch these videos and aren't subscribed, come on now, put a new TCG video out every day, okay? So do us a favour and hit that subscribe button. So yeah, like I was saying, um, I played a bit of Dragapult, I played a round of it, I should say, tried a few builds, but none of them really, um, really like, stood out to me too much. Um, but this build, however, I have to give full shout outs to uh, Jared Taylor, I believe he's an Australian player, um, and he's been peppering lists on Verbank. Um, I, I, and some of them have caught my eye, but this one, I saw this and I thought, no, 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 no. I need to get my hands and make a video on this list. So if you have any more sort of in-depth knowledge, um, it, if you want to know more, sorry, as to why certain counts are the same, make sure to go message him. He'll be able to tell you exactly. I just sort of took the list, played a few games, made a couple changes to sort of match my sort of play style that I like. Um, but the full, full credit goes to him. So let's have a look. So. This is Dragapult VMAX Tag Team Supporters, okay? So, let's have a look at Dragapult VMAX in case you don't know what he does. He's a stage 1, essentially, VMAX Pokemon, 320 HP, 2 attacks. First one, Shred, 1 for 60, um, isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active. Kind of cool, you know, go through stuff like Frying Pan, it's not the greatest of attacks though. Uh, Max Phantom, however, is the one we're going for. That's the build around two Psychic Energies, does 130, and you put five damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. So, it's super efficient attack 130, it's just enough to two shot pretty much everything. And five uh, damage counters spread, you know, lets you pepper Jirachis, lets you set stuff up for uh, KOs later on the board, uh, later in the game, and it's going to let you, you know, take some multi price turns, that's the idea. That's what I like about Dragapult as a card, it's really efficient, it's probably the correct word, it's just so efficient, two energy with an effective 180 um, damage output, it's pretty cool. So that's our build around, resistance to fight and weakness to dark. Um, we do, oh no, that's the, <laughs> this is our evolving basic. Um, Dragapult V, 210 HP, 2 attacks, Bite, 1 for 30, not a lot to talk about there. And then Jet Assault is actually interesting. Um, starts off at 60 for 2. Um, then if this Pokemon started the turn on your bench and became the active, there's 80 more. So, worth noting that you've actually got a little uh, good bit of damage output there on the baby Dragapult V. When we treat costs. So. Let's have a look then. So, one key addition I really um, saw in his list that he was that he put on his Facebook post. Uh, he actually played two of this alone in me up. I mean, I'm only opting for the one, but I can see why you played two. This is insane. This lets you um, really keep that early game tempo, the turn one tempo, that you are always missing when you're playing Dragapult. Because you don't really want to attach energy to a Dragapult V, leave it in the active and just do 30 for many reasons. You open yourself up to stuff like Rogue Team Yell um, and stuff like that, okay? But uh, with this Alola Meowth, what this lets you do is it lets you have a really potent turn one uh, if you go in second. Uh, it lets you care something like Jirachi, okay? It lets you care something like Grookey. It lets you care stuff like um, Snom. Uh, in the mirror or any Dragapult game, it lets you do like, what, 140 for no energy? Which is like, pow. Um, this card's insane. Whilst letting you preserve your energy attachment for the turn, because we all know the way to beat Dragapult is to rip his energy off really fast, so they can't ever get attacking. This lets you have early game uh, potency whilst uh, preserving your energy or not putting energy in the firing line. Um, so like, let's say against Blounds, for example. Blounds is going first. Um, if you let your Dragapult V attach energy left in the active, there's a very high chance that, um, <laughs> that that Dragapult is going to die. But with this, you can leave this in the active, potentially care which you're actually at the same time, um, and get still get your energy on the uh, on the bench, and now you can get to cooking um, by, you know, uh, getting the VMAX going in the next turn. So I'm a big fan of Alola Meowth. Uh, I'm surprised that I haven't been playing it a lot sooner. I've been throwing this card into so many of my decks now, and full, uh, full credits to Jared for putting me on it. Spoiled of fun is it does exactly what it says on the tin, baby. <laughs> so we've got that. Uh, we've got one to Dene to hurt us draw through. We've got two Jirachis. Now, 
in a sort of Dragapult meta, Jirachi's becoming more and more sort of scary of a card to play. And with Pequamp as well. So we're only going to play two here. We do play a Skateboard as well. But we also have Scoop Up Nets. And I do try to try and take this off the board as soon as we can. Once we've got use of it. Uh, provided, you know, not going to get KO'd or something to act as a pivot. So still got two Jirachis though. We've got the Scoop Up Block Mr. Mime. Because, you know, KOing Jirachis... Uh, is a big uh, part of our game plan and obviously we can't one shot a Jirachi if it's on the bench it's sort of spread uh, over two turns and a lot of people if they're playing scoop pop nets or like baby counts for example they'll try and stop you from doing that uh, Mr. Mime is going to stop them from scooping up Jirachi um, and if they want to race a turn trying to Guzma kill it then you know <laughs> carry on like good card good. and it's treasure searchable uh, we've got the Wobbuffet Prism Star Blocker Shady Tail really good stop stuff like um, Victini uh, Coco Prison Slowdown Picaron. Uh, is there any others? Oh, and I guess Ditto as well, potentially. Uh, if they put down a Ditto and then you put down a Wobbuffet, that's a free prize. You can just, just sprinkle, 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 baby. So um, Wobbuffet's really cool. Again, it's Trader Search as well. So if you don't need it, leave it. And if you do need it, just quickly go grab it. We play the Fion. Fion's really cool because a lot of the time you won't need a full 130 to pepper the active to KO it, okay? Not sure what trade that was. <laughs> we'll go have a look at that. But um, <laughs> but um, where was I? Okay, yeah, we, we don't need a full 130 in the active a lot of the time. Okay, um, we want to try and be as efficient with our damage counters as we can with Dragapult. That's the sort of aim of the game. Uh, what Fion lets you do? It's like a soft Guzma in the sense that let's say the thing in the active you're going to kill only has 40 health left. You don't want to put a max Phantom into that. Um, you might not always have access to boss's orders and you can't really go into custom catches unless you're playing greens So what fear lets you do it's like a soft uh, Counter a soft ghost where it's like right you go to the bench I'll finish off my five damage counters Let me two shot something else fear is really good for that. I'm a big fan We're already playing scoop up nets and we're already playing Jirachi. So you might as well throw the Mewtwo mind report in there. This is gonna let us um you know, get get back our support or stop us dead drawing. We're already playing treasures as well, so any treasure once we're set up, basically reads get a support about from the discard file and put it on top of your deck. So, um, or get it straight away if you've got Jirachi in the active. So, uh, Mewtwo, big fan, big fan, big fan. That's our Pokemon. Oh, I should say, uh, Jarvis opting for a four. Uh, um, oh, sorry, I forgot. No, Zig's good. Um, we've already playing Scoop Up Nets. So, and in any sort of Dragapult deck, being able to just bench this, get an extra 10, pick it up, you know, over the course of the game, head by tantrum. Again, it's going to let you be super efficient with your damage counts. Anytime you're, attack, you're, anytime you're taking exact knockouts with um, Dragapult is the most efficient way to play it. Uh, Galerian is going to let us do that. Uh, and with stuff, like you said, with our skill from it, you can start doing some bonkers stuff. Like, if you can get, you can just spring three damage counters out of nowhere, you know what I mean? Uh, if you go, like, you know, bench net, bench net, so, silly, so... Definitely worth playing for sure. Uh, yeah, Jarvis played a, a three three Dragapult. Um, I've opted for the four three just because I really want to just make getting bench Dragapult V with an energy turn one um, as often as possible, really, without trying to jump through so many hoops. Um, that could be me uh, just you know wanting crutch cards. If you want to go to a three three, that's perfectly fine. But I've opted for the four three here. Let's get to our supporters. You know that's the sort of new end, the new part of the deck, as to, so to speak. So. We play four Marnie. Marnie's going to let us disrupt our opponent, okay? Um, doesn't let us discard, card, discard cards, which is nice. We're not discarding stuff like Scoop Pop Nets if you don't want to. All that good stuff. Um, whilst acting like a bit of pseudo um, uh, disruption for our opponent, which is always cool. We then play three Cynthia again because we don't want to discard stuff. We want access to all our Scoop Pop Nets uh, all the time. And it's just going to help us do that really so simply you know pretty down the middle support i don't really to say there let's get into the tag team so the main reason why i really like this list is having super good access to malo lana okay um because on face value dragapult v max is a really tanky card yeah we all know that um and if we can just turn two shots into three shots while sprinkle 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 sprinkling it's just rough man it really puts your opponent in an awkward spot um and I'm a big fan of you know if you don't know what Marilana does, if you play discard two cards from your hand when you play it, you can switch your active and heal 120 off. So you know with stuff like scoop up nets and the switch, we can just cycle the same Dragapult over and over, you know, heal, heal, heal. And it's asking a lot from our opponent really. And it actually combos really nicely with a couple other cards we play. Um, it, it partners nicely with the Guzmahala. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Guzma Halle, if you discard two cards when you play it, you can search your deck for a special energy, a tool card, um, uh, and a stadium. Sorry, I don't want to think about that. So, 
this accomplishes a few things in Dragapult. This is going to let us grab horror energy. So, you know, any because we want to, we need to get energy a turn. We've got no energy XL in this list. So anything that's going to let us search out energy is pretty good. Obviously, Honor energy is really nice as well. But um, what this mainly does in this list, though, search out a couple things. So it's out Giant Bomb. This is going to help you keep the prize trade in your favor against stuff like P uh, Baby Blounds, for example. Um, and at any time, it's going to force them to try and go for the two shot, right? And to two shot, they have to go over 180. That's just how it is. Um, and Giant Bomb really punishes them for that. And if you're getting a free 10 damage counters on their active, it's really good maps with map, uh, maths with Max Phantom, I should say. The Giant Bomb's a really cool card. And being able to just goes Halloween when you want is nuts. Uh, and it also lets us grab a skateboard, um, which is obviously you know pretty normal for a good Halla. But let's not forget, a skateboard has really good synergy if we're trying to get a lone Meowth going. Because let's say we lead Jirachi, we can just good Halla, bish bash bosh, um, get a lone Meowth out, or we lead the Dene or Zigzagoon. You know, a skateboard's going to let us be our pivot, so that's kind of cool. Good Halla, let's just search that out. We've got the Cynthia Caitlin. Um, this is our sort of only raw draw cards option in the deck. And we are playing Tag Call, so Tag Call can always become get a support back from a discard pile and draw free. And that's kind of cool. It lets us reuse Malolana as well. I think in Jared's list, he was only playing one Malolana, but I wanted to lead into it a little bit more just to really accentuate that Malolana because I didn't want to prize it and stuff like that. So. And then we round off the list with one boss's orders. You could make that a little bit hard, I'm not going to lie, but you've got stuff like Fionn and stuff like this. And you can always reuse his boss's orders with uh, Cynthia Caitlin, so we've got one of them. Whew. So yeah, let's get to our stadium. We've got two Fridge and Forest. You can change this if you're feeling risky into like something like a Swirl or maybe even a uh, Shrine of Punishment. I'm not against that at all. Um, I just want to really make sure we get an energy a turn and just two more Fridge and Forest is going to let us see more energy over the course of the game. Um, and we can't just go down to no stadiums, obviously. But obviously stuff like um, Thunder Mountain goes unchecked. So I think two Fridge is fine. But yeah, if you want to be a bit more risky into like um, a Chaotic Swirl, I'm not against that. I'm just a bit of a baby. Speaking of tag calls, we play two. Again, this is going to just help us keep ticking over. Let's find our Malolana. So, tag calls such a versatile card when you've got the whole suite of uh, tag team supporters. Because at any point in the game, tag call can become Guzhala, turn into energy, tool cards, um, giant bomb, all that stuff, right? Or it can turn into heal 120 damage from your active, right? Uh, Malolana. Or it can turn into a VS Seeker and draw three cards with um, Cynthia Caitlin. Um, it's just a lot, a, lot more con a lot more consistency added whilst being super versatile. I'm a fan, we've got three switch just to help out with our um, deck movement and to help out to get um, Alolan Meowth going. Four Mysterious Treasure because we're an all psychic deck, pretty much. Four Scoop Pop, next gonna let us reuse stuff like Mewtwo, Jirachi, Fear, well not Fear technically I guess, um, and Galarian Zigzagoon. And then four Quick Balls just to round out the list. I guess we should talk about four horror energies as well. We're not horror energy it does. If you take damage while it's attached to a psychic Pokemon, they take two damage counters back, which is cool. Again, anytime you can cheat extra damage in the Dragapult, it's always fun. And then six, six, yeah, six psychic energy to round out the list. I'm going to stop talking now. Let's get into some games. Right, so here we go. One of our games. Um, we have ourselves Lightning Dragon Water. So. Could be like ADP Coco. Uh, I actually can't remember what goes on this game. It's been a while since um, <laughs> since I recorded these games because my camera started working. I had to get another camera, which is quite scary to think about. You just paid £400 for a camera and then <laughs> bloody thing stops working. But alas, we've got a new camera. Here we go. So, we lead Jirachi. Always good. We've got a quick ball switch so we can get a Lolan Meowth value, which is always nice. Hopefully, like a, like a Jirachi. Or uh, Gookie or something. I guess not Gookie because we didn't see grass on their uh, deck. So. Let's have a look. So we lead you actually. We've got ourselves treasure. We're actually missing energy though. Um, I think he, they said they were going first. So we can, we've got simply to try and find energy. So we can like mysterious treasure. Away something. Maybe Wob. Oh, I put down the Wob cheeky there just to stop any Coco shenanigans. Bit, uh, bit uh, forward on my part there. But it looks like we're playing against Nuzzle Raichu. Um... So on face value, we've got stuff like Giant Bomb, which is going to be super clutch because, you know, if they want to reach that two-shot range, they're going to carry themselves, which is kind of cool for us. Obviously, we're spreading damage counters as well. All these Pokemon have a low HP. And it's also worth noting right now, as it stands, whatever he leaves in the active, we can get a KO with with Alolan 
Um, what's he called? Meow. Let's have a look what we get. What, what we get hold of here. We actually could use a Fion to push the Immorgor out the way, so we can make our um, thingy a bit more alive, Alola Meowth. But it probably just promotes Immorgor in that scenario because he has two, which is a bit annoying. Otherwise, we'd definitely be doing that. We get rid of the Scoop Up Net to grab ourselves a Dragapult. That seems sensible. Uh, I, I imagine we probably Quick Ball away. Probably fear and a bit annoying. I have to get rid of it though to find our Lola Meowth. There he is. And hopefully we will get an energy. Whoa! We should definitely play our Cynthia first. Is there a reason to why I'm. as to why I did it that way? I think at the time there was a reason why I did that. Was I looking for something in particular? I feel as if I was. I couldn't tell you what it was. They're trying to find Viridian or something? I don't know. I feel as if there was a reason why I did it. But anyway, we're just trying to find energy at this point. We take nothing. We switch now. We're trying to find a skateboard, maybe? Uh, there's definitely a reason for it. We get energy, though. That's the main thing. And this is what exactly why Alolan Meowth is in this list. So we can, be, we can have that early game potency, not have to leave Dragapult in the active. Um, and that's something Dragapult just has none of. There is no turn two going second 70 there's just no there's just no no room for that just as the nature of the beast with dragapult so we take a cheeky we take a sneaky first prize and uh, now what's also good about the lola meowth as well um because we use it so early on in the game right <clears throat> if they want to if they want to try and go around it because obviously damage into there is a waste for the most part right um they're taking one prize it's not into our big tanky dragapult vmac so if they want to boss his orders and try and hit into your dragapult that's perfectly fine they're going to be hurting their own setup if they do that though anyway, because they're not going to be seeing cards if they do that they're only going to hurt themselves really by doing it that way um and that's another thing about the lunar meow so we're taking damage off our dragapult we're gonna make it even bulkier in that mid to late game as well that being said, let's have a look. So he puts down the power plant, which is kind of scary because we actually haven't got energy in our hand for next turn. Um, so we might have to go fishing for it. I'm not sure how. I guess the downside here to Lola Meowth is though, um, he can just snugly generate it behind it, which is fine. But uh, normally we have to attach energy to retreat, but we have got the screw pop nets as well. So we actually get super good value from that Lola Meowth. He literally comes in, takes the prize, slaps the Emolga, and then comes straight back into the end, like, well done, mate. <laughs> You've done your job, and we're probably going to quick boil him away, in all fairness. <laughs> Super efficient. I guess we can scoop up net and use Dirachi to try and find ourselves a supporter, which uh, looks like what we're going to do. We can then uh, VMAX. We can probably quick ball away Lola Meowth, just for a bit of sequencing, and see if we do that. Well done, Shay. Ever since I've... Uh, Gone back into postcom. Oh, we can actually grab Mewtwo um, and then Stellar Wish. That seems kind of that seems kind of good. I was literally just about to say. Ever since I started postcoming, I've noticed. You know, you can notice sequencing and errors there. And I think going for Mewtwo is probably the correct play here. But um, you know, let's see if we get punished for that. Uh, <laughs> of course, we don't. <laughs> So we took the tag call here. So it's like I'm going for the Guzmahalla to grab ourselves what a skateboard and horror. That seems that seems good, yeah. And we can also take the Malalana or the Cynthia Caitlin so we can reuse. Uh, okay, yeah, Cynthia Caitlin. I don't mind that. And what we get rid of on the Guzmahalla here, probably what? Scoop up net, uh, second VMAX, or scoop up net to Dene potentially. Let's have a look. Uh, but Davy bosses orders. We won't be taking one pros all the time anyway. We've gone for Cynthia and Caitlin. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I don't mind that as well. We're not really um, getting much use out of it. Good thing we didn't find a skateboard. Otherwise, we'd be fuming. <laughs> don't worry, I checked for that. I checked for that last time. <laughs> so, a skateboard, horror, energy, Viridian. Solid, solid picks there. That also means we can do Dene next turn as well. Uh, we could do it this turn. Let's have a look. Well, we're placed now, so... So, we can retreat. And looks like we're going to go for the Dedene. Although we only play 4 or 3 on the VMAX. So that might be a bit aggressive binning one off here. So now I think we're looking to hold so we can VMAX next. That's perfectly fine. In that case, we probably shouldn't have put down Viridian. But um, like I said, if I didn't misplay, it wouldn't be a Shea game, would it? Let's be honest. I'm only giving you the real authentic Slowpoke well, Shea experience. You know, if I was to show you a game where I didn't misplay at least once, then it's not an accurate portrayal. <laughs> okay. 
So it looks like we're going to uh, spread the, the damage out here. So we start chain multiple prize knockouts. That's the idea anyway. Drop me pen. Drop me pen. Don't know where it's gone. Okay. Uh, what do we get the prize there? Switch. You know, so so it means we have a stellar wish available potentially. And he's going to have to, look like he's going to have to go for one of those, uh, what is it called? Snuggly generator from the patch Rizu. Had it in hand. I guess he could nuzzle for it anyway, so... Um, and whilst he is snugly generating, we just have full means to just spread damage all over the shop, which is exactly what we need. And there's a Cynthia from our opponent. Let's have a look. She's got two wide shoes out, one peach on the bench. And what do we spread damage to the Amolga? See, this is where having the fear would be nice, because he went into that Amolga because we've already damaged it. So that's like wasted damage now, right? Like, this one, 31 shots, everything. We don't really want to be putting it into... Um, and a Morgan with 30 damage on. Although I guess I'm, I'll say that and he's going to go first blue generator anyway. Just <laughs> like I'm counting energy there. So what's he doing? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We're doing 120 as it stands now. Then we will get a stuggly generator off. So he'll be going for, what's that? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 140, 160, 180, 200 if my math is correct. Uh, and that's a scary number. In all fairness, that is that's quite a big number. That's why we play the Marilanas though, so we can sort of erase that big chunk of damage. And let's see what we're uh, going to get here. So we get Viridian off the top, not really the greatest. Let's have a look. When we do get Viridian though, uh, Viridian in place, we can guarantee ourselves an energy, which seems fine to me. Probably getting rid of what's good for the network switch. It looks like this is going to be the Dedenne turn because our hand isn't really doing a great deal at this point in time. I guess we could have probably switched into Stellar Wish here. We have no reason not to do that. So, bad share. That's another misplay. Count with me. That's two now so far. <laughs> but that's good, though. Because now I get to learn my misplays. And you get to see what a good list does with a bad player. So, imagine what it's going to do in your hands. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. So, we get Headbutt Tantrum online. I think we've got rid of two Scoop Pup Nets. Or three, I'd like to say. Put three there. Or oh, one damage counter there, I should say. No, oh, he, he, he didn't like that, did he? Oh, Pequim. There's a Marnie. So he did have a pretty big uh, hand. And there's the giant bomb. This is clutch now. So if he wants to go in for that two shot, he's now going to kill himself. And that's exactly why we play the giant bomb. For situations like this, um, imagine this is Baby Clowns we're playing against. Now exactly the same scenario takes place. We start peppering the Jirachis and the stuff that's on the bench. Maybe the uh, Oracorios as well. And um, yeah, that's the way. That's what we do. That's exactly what it works. So now look, what's he going to do? Uh, we have to force him to though. We force those four cards, one of them to be a boss's orders. Otherwise, he straight just KOs himself. <laughs> like, it's that simple. Uh, there's a Reshi Rom though. That's kind of worrying. Um, that makes me that makes me think he's probably playing the Coco Prism, uh, which shows the value of the Wobbuffet Fett there, because um, we can just start that nonsense right now. Either way, that um, if he does go in for the uh, the what's it called there, the Reshi Rom, Reshi Rom, he'll be taking 100 back. So you know, damage in play, baby, damage in play. So let's have a look. So he fails. That there's an electro power. Okay, so he's really looks like he's double electro power. Okay, I don't know how much damage he's doing now. How much? 240. So yeah, with the, with the horror energy, he actually KOs himself. Uh, that's rough. I actually forgot why she takes the um <laughs> takes the giant bomb, but the horror energy came in clutch. So we just max fight them again. Um, so yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> for him. Um, let's get into the next game. I think I think we've got one more. Right, so this game, I'm going to warn you now. I'm going to pre-warn you now. I remember, this was the very first game with this list I played, I think. Or one of the first games. Um, and when I was sort of copying the list over from Verbank, from Jared, I forgot to put in Viridian Forest, okay? Which is fine. Which is fine. You know, if you're going to draw into your card, you have Guz Mahala to grab your energies, that's fine. But you're going to see instantly why that is a big old mistake in this game. Let's have a look. Instant red flag for a start is we are playing against a dark deck. Okay, so he's gunning for us uh, for this matchup. Sableye V. Um, the, the only sort of potential saving grace to this situation is that Sableye cannot two-shot 
a uh, Dragapult on his own. They have to have prior damage on. And just as I say that, there goes the Headbutt Tantrum. <laughs> so, with a Screw Pop Net as well. So he actually gets... Okay, wow. So that's a lot of pressure. Um, one good thing is, Obstagoon probably doesn't play a lot of Gust. Um, doesn't play a lot of Gust. So, hopefully he has to hit into this warfare at some point. And there is the problem of us not playing Viridian City, uh, Viridian Forest, I should say, is that that black market is now going to stay here <laughs> for the rest of the game. So what happened there? Did we scoop up now? Yeah, scoop up now. So that is a big, scary problem. And so it looks like I'm taking the aggressive approach here um, by putting Dragapult in the act. If we get the giant bomb down, which is super clutch, I mean, he will KO himself. Um, after this Max Phantom, which is sort of cool, um, but yeah, we're gonna have to start being a bit aggressive now. Uh, I'm taking the opportunity. I'm, I'm just hoping that because he's got a two card hand, that his two card hand isn't the greatest. <laughs> bit of a risk on my father, you know. When Black Market is now locked into play, you have to take some risks. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, let's have a look. So we get the V Max online. We've got a Bench Dragapult V. We've got Mewtwo. Um, debate we have to bench that now. Uh, let's have a look. Because we haven't got support in our hand, so. And we haven't got another Dene, so. Let's have a think. It's like I'm thinking about it. Seeing he has 70 health, so we can two shot that Zigzagoon. Or we can spread. And I think I probably should bench that Mewtwo, so it looks like we do. And we go, can we go for the Cynthia, which is fair enough to me. And there's the Max Phantom. Super clutch, really, in all fairness, with that giant bomb. Again, giant bombs showing their value. Well done, Jared. I, mean, I don't think it's something that Jared uh, necessarily um, thought of in Dragapult, but uh, opening my eyes to them now is insane. So you're putting four there, and then one on the Zigzagoon. Okay. Probably should have split that. Oh, I think I misclicked that. I wanted to put three on the Mew, but I accidentally put a fourth and TCGO doesn't let you, um, I remember I was like, oh god's sake, I can't, it doesn't let you change, so. So there's Cynthia off his two card hand, so that's not ideal. Um, there is a rare candy, Obstagoon as well, which is also not as scary as a Sableye, but still 160 HP. That, so you can't one shot that, and it can hit you for 180 on a one prizer, or a no prizer whilst, um, that market is in play but he actually misses the energy which is incredible goes for the bratty kick and now i think the ball is firmly back into our court it's got a one card hand he has got the least polka doll up kind of annoying but um but yeah now we're going to start taking some prizes like full force here so, so we're going to go for the mew we're going to get the boss's orders that's clever don't play that quick ball oh <laughs> oh, okay, this is why I started. This is actually one reason why I wanted to start post comments. So I can notice this stuff now. And um, <laughs> and I can realise what I'm doing wrong and how I can fix it. So I know that was painful, guys. I know that was painful. But um, <laughs> well, don't worry. We were ready to see it together. We actually could have got Manaphy also in that situation. Could have been kind of cool. But, you know, we did what we did. And uh, that's what I said. You get to see what the uh, good decks do in the hands of a bad player. <laughs> so we carried a Mew, and uh, we're going to sprinkle on Tiger. Because Tiger only has like what 30 HP, I think. It hasn't got a lot. If it's the same as um, could have also carried Poke Doll in that scenario. Uh, that's another another thing we could have done. Goes into the Tiger. Tiger has 60 HP. I apologise, but we can still carry it. There's a great ball from our opponent. Um, and again, we're obviously taking less prizes now because of the black market. And there's the concede. So, uh, the reason why I left that game in is just so I can show you that uh, we had no business winning that game, right? But then having access to the cards we do in the card pool that we have, you can still take those shiki wins, baby. So, uh, that's Dragapult Tag Team's uh, tag, uh, tag team supporters. It's my favourite way to play um, Dragapult VMAX. And I think you should give it a go. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.